morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to add my own voice to that of Stavros, welcome to all of you on behalf of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Um, I'm particularly privileged to be chairing this uh, thanks to the absence of our Dean, Professor Kishore Mehbubani. So once again, apologies on his behalf uh, for his not being here to welcome all of you. Um, I know that most of you are actually here to hear Lalu Prasad ji. Uh, he is an iconic political figure in India. Um, and I will say something about him when I introduce him when he comes, so I'm not going to take your time uh, talking about uh, our star speaker this morning. But as they always say, there's someone behind uh, some the, the great leaders um, in any democracy. And that someone is the person who's going to begin uh, the proceedings this morning, uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar. I think the Indian Railways um, turnaround story is really a story of political leadership providing inspiration to professional leadership. The Railways have always had the good fortune of very good professionals, but they've suffered uh, because of very bad political leadership. For a lo long time, uh, we've had ministers uh, who really <coughs> didn't think beyond their own constituency uh, when it came to the railways. But India has one of the world's great railway, uh, railway systems, and it's been run by a very talented and professional service. And one of the persons who's played a key role uh, in providing leadership to that professional service in this turnaround story is Mr. Sudhir Kumar. So without much ado, I invite him to tell the story of the turnaround of the Indian Railways. It's my, it's my proud privilege and pleasure to be with you all today. I will take about 20 minutes to make my presentation. Instead of 30, 35 minutes, I will take only 20 minutes. And then we will have about 25, 30 minutes for, for discussion. Now, this is the railway of 2001, when it was said that it will declare a bankruptcy of 16 billion US dollars. And it was suggested by World Bank and all experts that railways have no future. In fact, it is in a debt trap, which is in terminal stages. And they had said that it has no future unless unless they downsize, unless they increase passenger fares, unless they divest, unless they set up a tariff regulator, unless they do all typical textbook solutions. And this is the railway of today. We made about $5 billion in cash surplus last year. Over the last four years, Indian railways have made about 15 billion US dollars. Our operating ratio, which is the key measure for assessing the efficiency of any railway system in the world, the operating ratio, which simply means that how much you are spending to earn a rupee, and here, spending means, expenditure means cash as well as non-cash expenditure. Now, our operating ratio at 76% is the best operating ratio anywhere in the world. In our country, these days we are enamored of the tremendous progress made by China, and rightly so. But this is one indicator where we have overtaken China by a really wide margin of 6%. It was said that we are in a debt trap, which is in terminal stages like cancer. 
and today our debt service cash coverage ratio debt service here does not mean only repayment of interest or repayment of principal here it it means repayment of principal as well as interest the debt service rep, uh, debt service cash coverage ratio is about 6 times and when we were uh, we were discussing the budget for for the last year with honorable prime minister he said sudhir you are a grossly grossly under leveraged company now this is the railway which was said to be in a debt trap is accessing international markets at the peak of the subprime crisis when the entire world was undergoing risk aversion credit squeeze and a serious lack of confidence in emerging economies during that period as early as in november 2008 we placed our dollar denominated bonds in the discerning international market i will request you to hazard a guess these are the times these are the turbulent times when general electric of the world and goldman sachs of the world are borrowing from warren buffet at the coupon rate of 10 and half percent during these turbulent times indian railways place their bonds believe me at 4% 400 basis points <laughs> when we were placing our bonds the libor was 2.90 and we got this 2.90 plus 1.1 in our country it is said that the rating of reliance industries limited which is the biggest private sector company in india they say the rating of reliance industries limited is better than the sovereign rating of india and i challenge mukesh ambani you please try and place your bonds at 4% now what is leading this phenomenal phenomenal transformation in indian railways now the world bank had made some typical textbook solutions these solutions have worked wonders in politically non sensitive sectors like telecom like highways like airports airlines but they have been non starter non starter absolutely in political politically sensitive sectors like railways like energy like irrigation like drinking water like health like education and therefore there is a kind of cynicism all around that in such sectors there is no future because politicians will not let you do what the commercial prudence will demand from you and the organization cannot become viable unless you run it on commercial lines and that is how the world bank said that indian railways suffer from a split personality the challenge the challenge before the railways was to serve an omelet of reforms to serve an omelet of reforms without breaking any eggs whatsoever now how beautifully this omelet has been served to the nation this is uh, uh, this is uh, very clearly proved by the transformation of indian railways so this inclusive reform is uh, agenda of indian railways what is driving this i would say that it is nothing nothing but pure and simple commercial common sense combined with combined with 
combined with this is very important combined with hand on the pulse of the pul of the people by my minister with uh, with lot of political savvy so it is a sweet combination of commercial savvy of a businessman like me i come from a business family who has been taught right from childhood how to make money about my community i come from a baniya community it is said people will not understand hindi here so i have to translate but you will miss the point in about my community it is said i will speak in hindi ki ye soong ke bata dete hain ki paisa kahan banaya jata hai that they can spell the opportunity of making money so commercial savvy commercial acumen is all about sensing an opportunity before others do seizing it and then making lot of money out of it we made 15 billion dollars you can also make few billion dollars if not billion you can make millions so this is the sweet synthesis of commercial savvy and political savvy and this requires four elements just four elements number 1 for success of any any business big or small private or public you must understand what is your business it is so simple now the all the experts around the globe they were saying that indian railways is in the business of railways and since railways are a natural monopoly we are the only rail operator in india therefore set up a tariff regulator now as soon as you define indian railways as somebody in the business of railroads you define yourself as a monopoly that is not our understanding of business our understanding of railways is we are in the business of transportation that is the paradigm shift from a rail operator to a transporter pure and simple have you ever heard of a monopoly who had a market share of nearly 100% in 1947 and nearly 90% in many commodities in 1991 and whose market share has dwindled to less than 15% in 2004 in passenger business and less than 35% in freight business and still everybody was enjoying the monopoly status of indian railways now the first and the foremost requirement for success in any business is a good diagnostic of the business a good diagnostic of the competitiveness of the business in the marketplace now indian railways was suffering from a typical competitiveness problem characterized by falling market share falling margins falling volumes terrible quality of service and bankruptcy and everybody was suggesting set up a tariff regulator have you ever heard of a regulator who has been set up to sell shampoos and TVs and frees and cars and taxis for anyone and have you ever heard a regulator reviving and regenerating the competitiveness of a business in the marketplace now this is the paradigm shift this is the diagnostic of the business and once you understand this business 
Just three words are enough. Just three words. Each of these words is worth two billion dollars, madam. Not in top line, but in the bottom line. These are dynamic, differential, and customer-centric policies. Dynamic means earlier Indian Railways had one uniform pricing policy for all. Lean season, peak season, congested route, light route, there is one policy. Now we are dynamic. We have one rate during the lean season, another rate in the peak season. We give discount of 30%, 40% during lean season, levy a surcharge of 5-10% in the peak season, and the story goes. In loaded direction, we have surcharges. In empty direction, we give huge discount of up to 50%. Now, how this policy is evolving and how it is so aggressive and nimble-footed, I will give you just one example. The world has undergone a paradigm shift, if I may say so, after fall of Lehman Brothers. And the entire trade, industry, export, import, everything is freezing up post Lehman. We were growing at 22%. Now we are close to zero. Now the success of any enterprise in a business is to align, is to change your business strategy with the changing environment, with the changing dynamics of the business. Can you believe it that over the last five years, we had raised freight rates for certain commodities by as much as 500%. Business is a ruthless place, madam. Don't be surprised. You have to make money. So it is a ruthless place. And it is not because of monopoly. Now, same 500% took five years to go up from 100 to 600. Post Lehman, we have reduced those rates by how much? We are back to square one. Now, five, 600 has again become 100. So that is the dynamism of the policy. So this is the demand side strategy in brief. The supply side strategy you see, you can satisfy the demand if you have the supplies in place, if you can deliver people and goods in time and in the quantity they require. So here again, three words, faster, heavier, and longer trains. Faster, heavier, and longer trains. The first word is worth about $3 billion and second, third is worth about a billion dollar. Faster here does not mean faster speed of train. The speed of trains in India, goods or passenger, has remained static for the last 35 years. So we couldn't do anything with the speed. Faster here only means faster recycling of the trains, faster turnaround time of the trains. We have got about 4,000 trains, 4,000 goods, goods trains, that is our total holding. If you turn them around every eight days, you can load 500 trains per day. If you turn them around, if you recycle the, the same train every five days, you can load 800 trains. These 300 extra trains means $3 billion in profit per annum. Heavier means... <clears throat> In the same train, you load more. In the same train, you load more. Just see this. This is, uh, this is the only diagram I will use in this presentation. You must have heard about Rajdhani Express, the capital express from Delhi to Mumbai, Delhi to Calcutta, Delhi to so many other places. So if you take a three-tier berth in Rajdhani, from Delhi to Mumbai or Delhi to Calcutta, it will cost you about <clears throat> 30 US dollars. Now, this 30 US dollars can be afforded by the middle class, upper middle class of India, but it can't be afforded by poor people of India. And my minister wanted that, that poor people should also travel air-conditioned 
trains. Why should they go in sweating, uh, sweating in, in extreme heat? Now, how do you make this innovation? How do you make such an inclusive innovation? It is so simple. This diagram says it all. In a typical Rajdhani train, you carry only 800 passengers. And our unit cost per passenger from Delhi to Mumbai is about $25, 1,200 rupees. But in the same train, Instead of 800 passengers, when you carry 2,000 passengers, 2,000 passengers, then your unit cost falls from 1,200 to 500. So you deliver a Tata Nano car. A car. What is so great about Nano? There are there is, there are only two greatness of Nano. Number one, it is a car at a motorbike price. One lakh car. Lakhtakiya car is the only greatness of Nano. Second greatness is that it will be launched three years after our Garib Rath. That is the second greatness of this. <clears throat> now, what is this Garib Rath? There is nothing Garib about it. Let us be very clear about it. There is nothing about poverty or poor people. It is a pure and simple, innovative, inclusive product of Indian railways aimed at expanding the size of the market from 0.1 million per day to 1 million per day. 0.1 to 1. You have to multiply the market by a factor of 10. And you can do that multi multiplication if your AC travel is possible at non-AC price. So if you go non-AC from Delhi to Mumbai, it will cost you 600 rupees, that is about $15. Garib Rath will take you there in AC comforts at about 650 rupees, again $12. So that is the product. And railways have transformed a loss-making business into a profit-making business by constructing this win-win equation, everybody has won. Now, this product has all the features I am talking about, faster, heavier, and longer. A typical Rajdhani train is 17 coaches. It is a 24-coach train. A typical Rajdhani will have a pantry car. It will have a luggage van. It will have a power van. This is a no-frill train. There are no frills in this. Even railway men cannot travel with their free warrant. Even I can't travel, even Lalu Prashad can't travel. It is a pure and simple commercial product. Everybody, like Singapore, everybody has to pay top to bottom. Garib Rath is a replica of Singapore. <clears throat> now, this is the demand side strategy, this is the supply side strategy. What made it happen? I will quote Peter Drucker and end. Peter Drucker said, great people do not do great things. Great people do not do great things. They identify simple and obvious things, as simple, as obvious, as each one of you understands. And by the way, faster, heavier, and longer are as old as railways. Railways were invented by humanity in the 19th century only for these three reasons. So they are as simple, as obvious, as dynamic, differential, customer-centric. So great people do not do great things. They identify simple and obvious things as simple as these and execute them. This is the sum and substance of greatness. And execute them brilliantly and swiftly. How brilliantly and swiftly this has been executed in four years, straight four years, an organization which was said to be on the verge of bankruptcy has found a place if we were a listed company, unfortunately, we are not a listed company. If we were a listed company last year, 
at the peak of global boom, we could have figured at serial number 78 on the Fortune 500 list of the world. And believe me, this year, when all, all the global corporations are down in dumps, we will figure in top 20. Make no mistake about it. Thank you so much. Clearly, Mr. Sudhir Kumar is learning a trick or two from his boss. <laughs> uh, would you like to take questions standing there or sitting yeah. here? Right. Um, we have some time now before the minister arrives. So if there are questions, I'll be quite happy to take them. There are a couple of, uh, there are four mics in the aisles. If you can please uh, walk down to the mic, introduce yourself, and ask a brief question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Chari. I work for the Deutsche Bank in Singapore. Uh, my question to you, uh, Mr. Kumar, is this. While the strategic direction had changed, how did the efficiency factor come in? It needs to be, execution needs to be supported by efficiency of the workforce. And given that the railways have been working, as you said, for the past 35 years, with efficiency not being very high, how could this complement the strategic uh, directional change? Thank you. You see, there are three things, three elements for the success of any organization. One is the productivity of labor. The second one is the system's productivity. And the third is leadership productivity. In railways, believe me, the first two elements have always been there. Their labor, I mean the engineers in railways, you take out the entire Silicon Valley and Bangalore Valley and even Singapore uh, Island. The entire expertise and talent of all these places. Uh, the other day I got a call that there are around 600 IITNs in Singapore and they want to host Laluji. That is how I know the number. How many IITNs Indian Railways has, by the way? Any, any hang of it? it? It is not in hundreds. Believe me, it is in thousands and many thousands. So that is the combined talent and engineering prowess of Indian Railways. So make no mistake about labor productivity. Make no mistake about robustness of its practices, procedures, systems, and organization. What about leadership? I am, I am passing no value judgment on the previous leadership. What I am saying is, that the fundamental role of a leader is not to try to extrapolate past into the present, into the future. Now, this extrapolation of past glory into the future, into the present, that, that was at the root of all problems in Indian Railways. Now, when we made a dispassionate analysis of the business environment of Indian Railways, as it existed in 2004 and as it exists today, I mean, we made all the difference. Same people, same network, same system, and we are making billions. You see, it is not a mere coincidence that over the last 60 years of Indian independence, this dirty word, dirty word called profit, dirty word called profit has not found a mention in any of the budget speeches of 60 or how many ministers, I do not know, and in any of the planned documents of Indian Railways. Now, profits will not come fall from the heaven if you are not striving, if you are not struggling for it. We have made profit a fashionable word in Indian Railways. That is our biggest contribution. 
Every single speech of railway minister, you please go through them. Every single speech of the railway minister starts with this dirty word. I have made six billion dollars in profits. So that is the paradigm shift. That is the role of the leadership. And in railways, in utilities like railways, profit can become fashionable politically. Commercially, it has always been fashionable. But politically, it can become fashionable if this profit is not coming from your and my, my pockets. If it is coming from the pockets of poor people of India, my minister will be thrown out next time. So as my minister puts it, let him arrive. As he says it, unki bhasha mein wahi bolenge, lekin mein angreji mein bolta hoon, that instead of sweating the customer's harder, we are sweating our assets harder. Thank you. Uh, yes. Hello. Yes, Mr. Jamboy. Uh, I'll call you next, Mr. Jamboy. May I congratulate you, sir? My name is Amir Jamboy. In a previous avatar, I was host to Lalu Prasadji when he came as chief minister to Singapore uh, with a delegation. So that is a personal connection. But the question I wish to raise is the future of the railway stations. They are not in a very good state at all, and there's a lot of room for improvement. I'm sure you have it on your plans uh, to see that the facilities and the sizes and, uh, of, and the uh, uh, advantage to passengers, the crowding, etc., and the ticketing, etc., would be solved. Thank Could you, sir. I have your comments on that? Thank yeah, you. I couldn't agree more with you, sir. This is your dot in line, and we also feel terrible about our, some of our terrible stations. But believe me, five years down the line, New Delhi Railway Station or Mumbai Railway Station will be better than the station of New York, Paris, London. Make no mistake about it. And here, we will not go to the World Bank or any other bank for, the matter, for that matter. We will only go to our land bank. We will go to our land bank. We are the biggest landlord in India. How much land Indian Railway owns in Delhi Railway Station, right in the heart of Cannot Place? Tell me, hazard a guess. It is not few acres, it is in hundreds of acres. That land is worth 10 billion US dollars, even in this downturn, 10 billion US dollars. So I can leverage that land of Delhi if Delhi is $10 billion, imagine what is Churchgate or what is Bombay VT. So we will access this land bank to provide world-class amenities to our passengers. Our request for qualification and request for proposals will come out in the newspapers. It had come out, but unfortunately, we had to discharge it for some technical reasons. But again, it will come out uh, uh, during this month and I would request investors present here to avail of this lifetime opportunity of getting land in Delhi and in Mumbai VT or Bandra Kurla complex. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Kalyan from NUS. I'm a student here. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Kumar. Um, I have this question that um, when you're faced with the bankruptcy about six to seven years ago, and you faced with this big challenge and you wanted to make profits, what were the landmarks did you choose? And did you do them in a sequential order or did you chase these landmarks in a parallel fashion? So where did you start? And how did you know that you were on the right track when you knew that other departments like uh, 
aviation or treasury were not doing things like the way you were doing. Yeah, so this is mainly my first question and second no, that, question. That, that's it. We've okay, got lots of you. questions coming yeah. up. Thanks. In fact, to, uh, to give you a very brief and short answer, uh, I will quote uh, from, uh, from Greshner, who said, what makes elephants dance? The first thing he did there was that he, he stopped making any power PowerPoint presentations like this. No blueprint for turnaround, please. <laughs> you have just to start and create early successes and then celebrate those successes. You see, small, small successes, small, small efforts can lead you to such miraculous, spectacular results. That is my only advice. Never, never create success and forget about it. Celebrate it. You see, if you, there are four elements of leadership. One is passion. They sh the, the leadership should be passionate about reforms. I hope I have infected each one of you present here with my passion. This passion becomes infectious. Within five, ten minutes, you infect the whole organization, 1.4 million people. You cannot, you cannot impress them, you cannot convince them by issuing fiats and showing them blueprints and PowerPoints, but by creating small early successes and then celebrating the benefits of that success. That is my short and swift answer because otherwise it will take a lot of time. <laughs> sir, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Sir, one question here. My name is Ghansham. I am from an IT company. Uh, you rightly given very good numbers about if railway was a listed company, you know, 20th number and 70th number, uh, why not really think of listing it? No, you are, you, are, uh, you are from World Bank, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> You see, there is a political context of railways. My minister said privatization of railways on my dead body. If you want me to get, to, if you want me to be removed from this post, then I will do it. I will say hello, yes, thank you. Then you don't it. <laughs> it is not possible. You see, politically, it is not feasible. Thanks. Let us be very clear about it. Myself, Vaishti Gupta. I did note it when you increase the users for the Rajdhani Express, what did you do to your normal trains? Did you upgrade them or did you reduce the price so that people can afford and was the upgrade possible or you do something else for the mass trains which you were having? Yeah, you see, over the last uh, four years, when we made our first $2 billion, my minister asked the chairman railway board, the then chairman railway board, what did I get in return? You made $2 billion, what did I get in return? Mr. Batra was the chairman then. He said, sir, you, you, you were being ridiculed earlier, now you are Professor Lalu. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, this professorship will not win me elections. <laughs> I have to go back to the people. And his submission was, Reduce every single passenger fare by token one rupee per ticket. And in every single budget thereafter, minister had reduced passenger fares of every single class. AC1 is down, AC first class is down by 28%. That is why the elite of India and intellectual of India made him professor. <laughs> because AC1, AC2, and AC3 all are down where they travel. They have nothing to do with the common man of India. Sir. And then he has introduced this policy of free upgrade. That if you are waitlisted in the known AC and there is a vacancy in AC, you get to travel in AC compartment for no extra payment. And this is a good business decision, believe me. Because something is better than nothing. 500 is better than 1,000, isn't it? If, if you are not getting 1,000, the other option is zero. So 500 is better than zero, yeah. Sir, my, so, na sir, my name is Himanshu, sir. I work in an agribusiness company in Singapore for a few months. 
I have experienced all mode of railway travel in India. I have born and brought up in Mumbai, including the famous Mumbai local trains. And the distinct uh, change I have seen over last few years is excellent, definitely with respect to Indian standards. But God forbid if there is a change of guard, God forbid if there is a change of guard in the elections, do you expect the same momentum to be carried on? Why I am asking this question is that, look at the National that, Quadrilateral That's why we got the project. question got fine. Look, got we, we are running out of time. And see, I, one see, minute, he, uh, Mr. Kumar. He, I'll he, take one more, a couple yeah. of more questions because I know we are running out of time. Yes. I am D.N. Gupta from Delhi. Mr. Sudhir Kumar, you have given a very good picture and my friend here says facility to the passengers. But what about the duty of the passengers? You try to throw something in Singapore, you are punished. But the people who are traveling in the trains, what discipline they have? Are they careful not making the railway or the platform dirty? What action railway is taking for the people who are not following these rules? Sir, you please travel and on Delhi secondly, Metro. secondly, I want why they are not more Sudhir Kumar in other ministry also. So like railway, the other things also prosper. Thank you. I, I'll take one more question. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar, congratulations for your uh, swift, passionate and effective talk. And I believe uh, really it has been going all around the world. Like you said, you must celebrate the success. That's good. And uh, my question will be, since uh, railway ministry, the public sector has done so well in so short time, uh, is anything happening with other public sector which has been also lacking for years, like Coal India and other things? Thank you. Maybe you can take these three questions yeah. and we'll come. You see, the first about change. What happens to the change once you are gone? Nobody is important, immortal in this world. Everybody who has come has to go. Maybe we have to go after three months. You are a very poor change leader. If everything collapses once you are gone, you are a very, very terrible, poor change leader. Now, what ensures that it will, it will be there once you are not around? The only thing is that instead of, instead of you owning the change, let there be ownership and identification of change with every single railway man from top to bottom. You, now you talk to any railway man, I, uh, so many scores of railway men are present here. Whether they think it is Lalu's program or Sudhir program or they think they, it is their own program. And you will get your answer. The second element for, for continuance and permanency of the change is that change agent usually tend to be policy centric. They forget about the procedures. You see, for change to become continuing, it has to become a part of organizational routine organizational psyche, organizational practices, manuals, that is the hard part of reform. And whatever has been done in railways over the last uh, five years, believe me, it is a true democracy. Believe me, minister has not ru overruled Indian Railways Railway Board on a single policy matter, on a single policy matter. We have waited patiently with a lot of persever perseverance. You see, change, agent, and impatience. That is, a, that is a very, very dangerous combination. Change agents, by definition, are in impatient people. But that is a very, very dangerous combination. Change agent with a lot of patience and perseverance make a wonderful combination for sustainability of change. Yeah, you had a question about people. Yeah, yeah. No, no, he, he, you see, he will, sir, he will. my Please. request is, my request to you is, same people, same passengers, why don't they make metro stations in Delhi dirty? Why don't they make metro trains in Delhi dirty? So I will not blame my esteemed customers and passengers. I will blame myself. That is the Indian Railways. Let us not blame passengers, Indian people for that. If we provide them good, clean environment, they will not do it. 
that is that is so, my my submission to you sir you may you are entitled to your views but that is how i feel about it very strongly Sir, sir, discipline has to come from within. It can't come. I mean, we are a democracy. You know what are our limitations. There was a question about the... By any stretch of imagination, I am not saying Singapore is something else. Please, please. There, there was and a the third one is that uh, for, the, for the benefit of everyone, I am writing a book which is being released by PM, hopefully, by the end of this month. Uh, and there we have tried to, uh, uh, we have tried to uh, uh, see, examine whether the inclusive reforms of railways are replicable in other sectors, in other departments in other enterprises, public or private. So, uh, and you see, once you create a success out of it, you create so many Sudhirs around, I have not doubt in my mind. Thank you. Yes, sir, you wanted to ask a question? Please. I'll call that lady next, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Suresh Shah. Uh, what I am trying to know is will you please tell us something about utilizing the idle assets which you have done by utilizing the cargo transport? Sir, Sari Rat Ramayan Padi Subhe Pucha Sita Kondi. Sorry. It is all about idle assets, you see, from the same asset, same network, same people. We have not purchased any new assets, new people. We made billions. So it is all about utilization of your potential. Don't make me speak what my minister will speak. I will reserve that speech only for him. Okay. Yes, so it please. is all about utilizing the existing assets. Uh, thank you. Sorry, thank, sir, let, let me move on to others. Lots of people raising hands, so okay. let me. Okay, yeah, fine. This lady. My name is Radhika Joshi. I'm a student of economics at Tufts University in Boston. My question was that we have seen impressive profits increase a lot over the past four years. How has this been reflected in customer satisfaction of people and companies using the Indian Railway? Thanks. Madam, this is our most difficult and delicate item. <laughs> and you are very delicate, I know this. <laughs> so, so it is coming from the heart of a lady. And we, f you see, it is very difficult to improve on the software part of, soft part of a business. That is the customer satisfaction the quality of our service, the behavior of our people with our customers. So we have miles to go, miles to go uh, before we reach our destination. But what we have done over the last five years is to make some systemic changes where, wherever, whereas their uh, bad experience, bad memories with the railways are consigned to the pages of history. I will give you just two examples. Now, instead of going to that wretched long queues on the ticket counters. You can go to your laptop and book a ticket. From Singapore, you can book a ticket. Now, instead of going to that train inquiry center where you, will be, uh, you may be ill-treated, now you can dial 139. You can dial 139 from anywhere in the globe, and you get an answer. And I bet, madam, if you get an answer, all lines in this route are busy, the next day our call center fellow will be sacked. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Neha, and I'm a student of the NUS Business School. Uh, I must say, as a business student, I do appreciate every single thing that you've mentioned in your presentation, and I'm a very satisfied customer. But as a citizen, uh, obviously, my primary concern currently is what is being done about the safety uh, in, you know, when we travel in yeah. the local trains. Madam, safety, profitability, productivity, everything is organically linked. If you are unsafe, you cannot be productive. You cannot be profitable. Over the last five years, our safety track record has improved 
from we had about 500 accidents in 2004 now that number is down to less than 150 so you cannot improve on pro profitability unless you improve on your reliability safety if you are talking about security of passengers and so many people were killed uh, during the recent bomb blast uh, in Mumbai trains. So there, uh, I mean, uh, some difficulties are there, but we are taking all possible steps to ensure that people are not only safe in trains, they are also secure in trains. Yeah. As well as yes. the stations. Yes, please. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Sir, I should uh, end because Minister... Yeah, no, he's a bit delayed, so we'll okay. continue till the... Okay. <laughs> Good, good afternoon. My name is Sanjeev Purushottam and I work here in Singapore, but I just wanted to quickly answer some of the questions in terms of customer satisfaction per dollar paid. Uh, my, my most comfortable journey anywhere in the world is from New Delhi to Chandigarh on the Shatabdi. I pay $16 for the executive AC class and if you take customer satisfaction per dollar paid, it is the most satisfying journey anywhere in the world in terms of attitude, in terms of safety, in terms of timeliness of the train. It's a brilliant, brilliant service. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what's the question? I have, been a, I have been a passionate follower of the Indian Railways since... No, what's the question? The question is very simple. In terms of return on assets, you have talked about the profitability yeah. on returning on the assets. I, I, grew up in, I grew up in Meghalaya. And in Meghalaya, the railway system does not exist. There is no increase of the railway assets. So you're at, is, there, is, is there a situation where you are milking the existing assets without creating new assets? on the Indian Railways. The Indian Railway system is exactly the same it was in form and manner. Yeah, I get your point. You see, return on assets, uh, for lack of time, I could not take it. But believe me, our return on equity is better than most of the blue chip companies of Indian corporate world. Even all the 30 Sensex companies, out of that, we will figure in the first 10 you forget about Infosys and Wipro of the world uh, because they have a return on equity of 30, 35, 40 percent because they hardly need any capital. But you talk about any capital intensive industry, we are, we are one of the best with 21 percent return on equity. That is our last year's performance. As far as ex expansion of railways to Meghalaya and other northeastern states of India, we are fully committed that all the northeastern states in India should, uh, should have rail connectivity. And Honorable Prime Minister, he had, uh, he had sanctioned a special fund for northeastern states where, and all those projects have been declared national projects. But since it is a hilly terrain, it will take a lot of time. And the second point, it can't be done in five years or four years. It will take uh, at least a decade to construct this line to Meghalaya, to Tirupura. Tirupura is getting commissioned this year, hopefully. The, the, the second element of this expansion of railways, whatever has been invested in Indian railways over the last 60 years of Indian independence, we will invest 50% more 50% more than that amount over the next five years. And that amount is 60 billion US dollars. Thanks. Yes, please go ahead. Please go to that mic there. Uh, my name is Ashok. I just a small question. How did you tackle the red tape while implementing all these things? Try, try again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. My name is Sitya Pali Ravi. Uh, I have one simple question. If you look at the history of Indian Railways, it's been one of the most um, integrating factor in a, in, in, in a country called India, which in, it integrated. Now, what is Indian Railways doing to lead an integrating effort to go beyond Indian borders? I want to travel from Singapore to India in a rail, in a train. Now, what is the simple, um, or rather, what is the effort being done towards that? I know there are political yeah, compulsions, yeah, my, my but question, beyond that. My counter question to you is, what is the viability of that proposal? <laughs> Sir, if, if, the, if the proposal is commercially viable, 
we can definitely consider it. Ships are being yeah. played. Yeah. There is goods traveling across. Obviously, there is uh, business down there. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, please. Can you just come to the mic because we can't hear you up here. Yeah. Okay, to run the railways, uh, previously we were using coal, now so many of them with the electricity. But when the railways run, there is a wind and the sun is available free. Is there any thought of using the wind to run some electrical generators or sun to use the solar so that we can reduce on the electrical cost? I am not a carbon uh, emission agency, you see. You see, let us not confuse the role of Indian Railways. You see, this confusion has caused so many problems in the past. We should be very clear in our uh, objective that I am not there, Indian Railway is not there to sort out every problem afflicting this society. Thank you, Mr. But by the way, railways are the most environment-friendly transportation system available today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that's a... Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. Laluji, I'm delighted to welcome you uh, on behalf of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. I want to extend a personal uh, welcome to you on behalf of the Dean of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, Professor Kishore Mahbubani, who has just been inducted as a member of the Global Advisory Council of the Prime Minister of India. I remember in May 2004, when the UPA government was formed, and when Laluji first met the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Dr. Manmohan Singh had one word of advice for him. He said to him that the Indian railways were waiting for reform for too long, had been neglected for too long. And if he could turn the Indian railways around, he would go down in history. And I think what we have seen in the last four years is Laluji's passionate commitment to that objective. Laluji is not just a railway minister, he's an iconic figure in Indian politics. I recall when President Musharraf came to India, he said to him that if he were to stand for election in Pakistan, he would win hands down. And I think I, if my memory serves me right, President Musharraf also said to him that he wouldn't dare stand against him in an election. <laughs> he is a popular figure across South Asia, but as India's rail minister, he has now left a mark globally. The presentation that we have all seen, sir, before you came, was an impressive presentation. And it is part of the explanation why we have a hall that is spilling over. We have people in another room watching you on television because we couldn't accommodate everybody here. And I think it's the combination of the prof professional leadership of the Indian Railways and the political leadership that Laluji has provided that has made this turnaround possible. I will only add a couple of words on the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. LKY has emerged as one of the preeminent schools of public policy globally, and we are delighted that we will be increasingly associated with the turnaround story of the Indian Railways. 
Sir, I always said to visitors from India after I've joined this institution that there is no other public policy institution in the world that can offer relevant training to the Indian public sector because Singapore is a symbol of public sector excellence. It's the commitment of public officials that has made this great nation possible, whether it's airlines, it's metro system, it's water system, it's public systems. They're all symbols of public sector excellence. And for India's largest public sector undertaking the Indian railways, I think the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy has a lot to offer as partners in your turnaround story. With these few words, sir, I welcome you to speak to an audience that's been waiting for almost two hours to listen to you. Honorable Minister of State for Railways, uh, Shri Veloji, Professor Sanjay Baruji, Chairman uh, of uh, Indian Railway Board, Shri Jainaji, all the uh, learned uh, lecturers and professors of this institute who are present here, and the students who are studying here, and all other ladies and gentlemen and also the representatives of media and ladies and gentlemen who are present here today. I am really feeling uh, proud while being present here today. This is uh, 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 my second oppor such opportunity in Singapore. I had got an opportunity earlier to address uh, uh, a similar uh, um, gathering at INSEAD University last year to uh, give a talk on the turnaround of Indian Railways. And this is the second opportunity that I have got to talk on the turnaround of Indian Railways uh, here in this eminent institute. During the past four days, I was in Japan, and uh, I also experienced uh, uh, very uh, bitter cold there. The weather was such, and uh, while I reached Singapore, I felt a lot of warmth here in the environment. And I think that the subject or the issue is only one. And that is that, that in the world, in the community of nations where India also enjoys a preeminent situation and without uh, the infrastructure being in place, no country can really move ahead and merely uh, by uh, delivering uh, speeches and by uh, raising slogans for or against someone, uh, no one can win bread or butter because you cannot really snatch uh, bread from nothing or from air. You can only win or earn your bread on the strength of uh, creating infrastructure and therefore the uh, government, uh, our government which is there in India and the Honorable Prime Minister who is there and Sri Sanjay Baru who also served him as his media advisor and discipline is really important and the way Professor Baru disciplined media in India was also commendable and I think that uh, after joining this institute here he has also started contributing immensely in uh, taking this institute on the path to further glory and now the entire world uh, has now become a global village because of the immense strides that have been made by the communication and development and technology. And what is happening around the world, we get to know of that through the internet. And the world has really become a small village, uh, so to say, because of the immense strides of technology. And we uh, remained uh, uh, isolated uh, 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 for so long, but when we joined hands because of the immense uh, progress in uh, communication, then we, uh, we became a part of it. And now the investors from the world over wish to come to India, and they have come because everyone believes that India is a responsible state, it is a responsible country, India is a responsible country, and that when they invest money here, 
they will really uh, 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 earn a lot of profit and things will move ahead and as i am a senior responsible minister in the government of india i am the minister for railways and therefore i would also like to inform you all before that i was the chief minister of a very important state of india that is bihar and then my wife became the chief minister of bihar and i have been a member of parliament since the year 1977 i got elected to the uh, parliament in 1977 for the first time and even before that uh, i do not hail from a very highly educated uh, or well of family i i uh, also raised uh, 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 goats and sheep uh, as a child and therefore uh, it's not as if i am a very learned professor and harvard since uh, you, we, we have MIT, professors from mit or harvard Bangladesh, or other similarly placed uh, institutes here sare duniya bhar se बच्चे और बच्चिया और इंसान लाइक आई आई ऑल्सो मैं दिस वाइल एड्रेसिंग गैदरिंग एट द इन सी आई एज टू वॉट इज द रीजन दैट द इंडियन रेलवे विच वर नॉट इवन इन अ पोजिशन टू गिव डिविडेंट अर्लियर एंड दैट इट हैड ऑलमोस्ट गॉन बैंक बिना भाड़ा बढ़ाए हुए एंड विदाउट इवन इंक्रीजिंग द फेयर ऑफ एंड विदाउट बॉर्डरिंग एनी क्लास वॉट मैजिक इज रियली बींग अचीव इन इंडियन रेलवे एंड एवरी वन विश इज टू नो एंड आई वेंट देयर एंड आई हैव ऑल्सो come here to enlighten you all baat the aap jante hain and as you all know hai, that hai. there is a coalition government in uh, india uh, now at the center and desh ke aur duniya mein in our country and our prime minister who is renowned all over the world uh, and uh, also with that we he is a renowned economist and is regarded as uh, as Uh, as a very renowned economist the world over and uh, i would like to say that uh, the indian railways were really in a shambles when uh, they used to talk of uh, india shining uh, a few years ago and we used to have accidents in indian railways regularly and every year on every budget whenever we would have the budget session in indian parliament uh, first of all a budget for indian railways is presented separately and the citizens of the entire country used to remain concerned that this year again the passenger freight would be enhanced passenger fares and freight fares would be enhanced and that used to happen the situation was not okay in fact it was in a very bad shape i am not criticizing anyone here but just uh, stating the matter of fact here and the renowned economists of the countries and and uh, a committee uh, under the, uh, the presidentship of professor rakesh mohan was formed and and that indian railways were oh, about to fall into the trap and the government had uh, constituted the, co the committee to revive indian railways and he had accepted it in that document that the way uh, the uh, trap that indian railways has fallen into in the coming 30 to 40 years there uh, does not seem to be any sign of its revival and therefore the remedial measures that he had um, suggested were that keep increasing the freight every year or removal of the implied and that for and also suggested uh, that you remove uh, 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 you uh, downsize and in, uh, decrease another the number of posts by 20% and another important recommendation that he had made was ko sochna chahiye isko that the government should think of uh, uh, divesting uh, its equity in indian railways and that it should be passed over into private hands so as to be able to run properly and these were the suggestions that were made by the committee and i knew of this situation even before becoming the minister and therefore i was not interested actually of, of uh, becoming the railway minister my interests lied elsewhere lekin but कुछ मजबूरियां रही बट दे वर सम कंपल्शन बिकॉज ऑफ विच आई फेल्ट दैट इफ इट बी पॉसिबल आई रिक्वेस्टेड द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर दैट प्लीज डोंट गिव मी दिस पोर्टफोलियो डोंट गिव दिस पोर्टफोलियो टू मी अदरवाइज यू विल हैव इवन मोर एक्सीडेंट्स एंड पीपल विल से दैट सिंस यू मेड मिस्टर लालू यादव द मिनिस्टर फॉर रेलवे सो देयरफॉर नाउ बियर विद इट एंड ऑल सच मिसकंसेप्शंस हैव बीन देयर पीपल हैव बीन थिंकिंग ऑन सच लाइंस सम पीपल 
make cartoons about me. They some even make movies on me. And the people would then ask me as to what is my age. I would say that, that uh, when even my grandparents did not know of their age, then who would keep a track of my age? But the Congress party, uh, who heads the coalition at the center, uh, asked me to revive the Indian Railways and take charge of it. And then I decided that when I uh, uh, grazed uh, buffaloes and the cows and sheep, then uh, controlling the Indian Railways would be an even less challenging a task. <laughs> so therefore, uh, we all sat and I called all the officers. You would know that the Indian Railways is the lifeline of our country. And if the railways were to cease uh, uh, work on one day, the economy of the entire country would come to a stand standstill. And it has 14 lakh direct employees. It is the largest employment providing organization in the entire world. And now we have 13 lakh pensioners in the country who, who have retired from the Indian railways. We have 14 lakh officers and employees and 13 lakh pensioners in the country. Come to think of it. Imagine. And, uh, and there has been uh, quite, a, quite an expansion and uh, we run 11,000 trains every day and I have also increased the number of trains every day. 64,000 kilometers is the network of the entire Indian Railway and I suppose it, it may not be uh, there in any other country and yet such a huge loss. So I decided that no employee would be retrenched, the manpower would be retained as such man power is our strength and the man power is our strength in the it is our wealth it is the treasure that we have in Take our country and it's okay that we need to really consider about uh, increase in the population in our country that would be an issue but after china we occupy the second slot uh, in population also our population has not touched 1 billion 10 crores mark and we, our people did not used to get enough food to eat when we had lesser population but now we have such use variety of food grains now and we have such bumper crops every year that we our food, gra food grains are in the surplus and uh, and i tell my children at home also that you eat vegetables but they are not able to finish the food that is available with them and therefore i told my indian railways that look here there would be no retrenchment and that i would would not hand it over to the coast, uh, private sector because Indian Railways is in the core sector and there are certain areas in the known sectors also, known core sector also where we might go in for the PPP and that uh, take our Indian Railways ahead and I said that you reduce the fares also and concentrate more on the trade, on the, on the trade. Because that's Aagiri more important. And even now, 60% of the goods are uh, ferried or through the road. Every trader thinks and uh, desires that he should be able to carry his uh, goods through the trains. And in every budget for all class, not only for the poor people, not only for the backbenchers or the ones who are on the edge of the economy, but even for the first class or uh, AC first tier or AC second tier, I have uh, brought down the fare. And, uh, and we have increased the number of wagons in, in the train and uh, also uh, laid a lot of stress on providing greater passenger amenities and I have also started fully air-conditioned Garib which would be the poor man's train and now there has been a reduction of 25% freight or passenger fare in air-conditioned trains and every segment I have brought down the fares and even on the turnaround of loading and unloading it used to be seven days earlier, I brought it down to five days, five days, and that has also ensured that our income increases. And the fully air conditioned, the middle class, lower middle class, uh, the middle class or the lower middle class, uh, like when we used to travel with our family, and now that the fuel cost or the fuel price has also gone up, it keeps going up and down, and that also impacts our lives. But we use one third of the diesel in Indian railways of the entire consumption of diesel in the country. See, we did not increase uh, the passenger fares yet, there was uh, no bad result. 
result. Uh, it Kuch only saw nahin. good results. Wohi there was uh, no bad impact. The same uh, people, the same line. rail employees, the same railway Aar track. Closing hoga hamara and uh, when uh, we uh, close our budget after the completion of uh, five years, one lakh uh, crore surplus uh, money would be there as dividends, uh, and this is uh, this money is going to uh, be debited in revenue uh, reserve bank. And this is being uh, discussed in, uh, in all lengths and breadths of the country that what is this magic that has taken place? The students ask me, what is the kind of magic wand that you have uh, uh, really implied? I said that the magic has just started. It is just a glimpse, but uh, the stupendous work remains. You are going to see the result of it. There is a huge congestion. Uh, in Indian railways. Uh, we uh, keep moving our train in, within a gap of five minutes. Uh, we call Indian railways Jersey Cow and Goods Train. We call it Earning Horse. Uh, it is our Earning Horse. Uh, so due to congestions, uh, the passengers, uh, for the passengers, we used to keep uh, the goods train on the loop line. Uh, and we used to face a lot of loss on account of this. So, the Honorable Prime Minister visited Japan, met the Japanese Prime Minister, both the Prime Ministers met each other. On, from Japan, Japan in a very low interest, Japan, Japan government gave us uh, this uh, confidence and uh, the work has uh, started, the project has uh, started, that reduced the pressure of uh, the line. I want to shift the pressure to the third line. I'm going to construct uh, double, line, double lines or the third line, which is called the dedicated corridor Lodhiana from Ludhiana, Punjab to Kolkata. Ko Kolkata. Including all ports of Howrah. Kolkata. That, that, is, uh, that will include double all the ports uh, of Calcutta. We are uh, soon uh, going to start the dedicated uh, corridor. 60% of the good, goods that are being transported by uh, roads and accidents take uh, place, and the transport Transporters face a whole lot of problems on account of this. Due to increasing fuel prices, it is very difficult in the logistic sector. We are soon going to shift it, and we are going to we are going uh, to construct the Western Corridor from uh, Delhi to Mumbai. And uh, the work on this project has started with the collaboration of Japanese uh, government, and we are soon going to finalize this uh, project, uh, and we are soon going to start this work as well. The uh, pressure on Indian railways will sh soon be shifted to uh, the dedicated corridors and uh, the industri in industrialist houses would come to the Western corridors and this decision is going to be soon taken by our government. In the second uh, phase, we have announced that uh, when we complete uh, this project within five years uh, from Mumbai to Chennai, from Chennai to Howrah, uh, this will be covered under dedicated uh, corridors because we have got a huge amount uh, of goods like iron ore, coal, and we have other materials. We have fruits, uh, vegetables, salt, fertilizers, grains. So these need to be uh, exported uh, elsewhere. And we are uh, re renovating our ports also for this. And in the nuclear uh, power sector also, the nuclear deal that took place recently, without power, how can the country develop? It's a major question. Without uh, airports, how can we develop? Without, without highways, how can the country develop? How can the country progress? So these are the things uh, on which uh, we have paid a whole lot of attention and concentrated on these infrastructural uh, facilities that, needed, and that needs to be given to the country. People used to discuss in the country that when are you going to introduce bullet trains in India? I have traveled in bullet train in Japan recently. In India, we are soon going to run bullet trains. 
the tender has been awarded so that from city to city, the big cities, the metros, we can run uh, our bullet trains. We are soon going to do this. And this is our firm decision. And I have all, I'm, I'm soon going to announce it in parliament also. So that uh, in a very short span of time, we can transport our people. You know when the, the fuel prices increase so, increase so many uh, aeroplanes uh, have to be uh, cancelled. And when, when, when I brought down uh, the price of uh, the passenger uh, trains, uh, um, people uh, came back, uh, people uh, refused to travel uh, by air. So, and we have given a lot of facilities in Indian railways, and the major debacle in railways uh, is the toilets, the discharge uh, the, that uh, is uh, dropped uh, in, on the railway tra tracks. And we are working uh, on this. Uh, not a single drop of discharge will fall on the railway uh, tracks. I visited the European nations. I have have seen the, the system there, the same system we are going to introduce in India, and we have already introduced uh, in some sectors, and then we are going to work on the world-class sta stations. We, I have awarded uh, the tenders uh, for this in the metropolitan cities. Uh, we are soon going to construct the world-class station uh, under joint venture. We are going to, uh, we have wheel factories, electric uh, engine factories, diesel diesel factories, we are going to bring up the coach factories, we are going to take the technologies from other countries of course, but under joint venture we are soon going to complete these projects. Indian Railways is very popular in the uh, world over and also in the country. The heights that we have touched, the vision that uh, we had, that we are going to be number one railways uh, world over. Even after subsidy, the passenger fares in other countries is uh, really high. I went to the European countries. I was staying in a hotel. When I opened uh, the window of my room, I saw a station in Austria. And there I saw a train running. I just watched it very closely, and I wanted to see how many pa passengers board and deboard the train. This train was beautiful. The engine was neat and clean, spectacular. But the number of passengers who boarded and deboarded the train were just two or three. And in our country, the scenario is totally different. The manpower is the symbol of our prosperity because we have a huge population, and they are. Our trains are always overcrowded. Uh, people have uh, to go to their workplace uh, in trains in every station. You visit any station, you can you will see it uh, overcrowded. Uh, if I have uh, given concession to all uh, the uh, students uh, who want to go to the cities for studies. I have given them free passes, in fact. Uh, I have given uh, free passes to all girl students. And we have come out with this advertisement uh, that uh, you will get free pass on such and such station. You please go there and collect your passes. Uh, the uh, girls uh, who are above, uh, the, uh, the girls uh, who are studying in the 12th standard, they would get free passes. And uh, the senior citizens, especially women, uh, they are given low birth. It is reserved for them. The, uh, we are soon going to increase uh, the speed of Rajdhani. We are strengthening ourselves. The Indian Railways is progressing, developing the lacunas, the loopholes that we had in our system. We are soon trying to weed it out. And uh, you have given me uh, the opportunity to speak here on this uh, forum. I would like to give uh, a suggestion to the students and teachers uh, that if you want, after completing your uh, education, if you want to uh, join an administrative service, honesty is a must.
Honesty is very vital. It is the key place. And second thing is the commitment to the organization which you are serving. And your vision should be very clear. If you don't have uh, these three things, you will face a recession, as you are seeing, seeing world over. The uh, CEO of organizations are failing. Somebody is uh, committing a mistake, and the students are being victimized. Uh, the unemployed youth. Uh, who has uh, recently got his job, he's being retrenched. Uh, he has to bear the brunt. So what I say is honesty is the key thing. And the organization uh, that you are serving, you should be fully committed to that organization. And your vision should be very clear. You should see what is going to happen in the next 50 years. Uh, because I have planned things, uh, uh, keeping in mind uh, the 50 years uh, down the line, uh, because the population is going to increase. So what will be our requirements? What will be our needs? Because if you don't uh, have a clear vision about that, you are going to feel uh, fail in, uh, in this respect. So, the, like, for example, goods trade, it is. Um, uh, they are long trains, uh, one, one and a half kilometers. Uh, but uh, if you uh, link the compartments, uh, then the loco consumes more fuel. Because uh, some of the um, uh, wagons are totally empty, but still it is a load on the locomotives, and you are consuming more fuel. You have to understand that. So what we are doing is we are reducing the tier weight. So when you reduce uh, the weight, you can load more good in it. Uh, so several steps have been taken in this direction by me, and it is just a beginning. And we have to do so many things, a stupendous work in future. Many people come up with the question that when you are not the railway minister of this country, then who is going uh, uh, to do all the things that you have done? Who is going to take uh, this ahead? Uh, uh, I say that. Uh, I don't know about it. I'm not clear. So uh, people are really uh, scared as to who is going to take over and do uh, things uh, for the railway turnaround. I'm thankful to all of you. Uh, we are. I'm soon going to face uh, the general election in May. We are having uh, having general elections in our country, and again we will uh, come in power and we will meet you. I will come and meet you once again. So till that time, I give uh, greetings uh, of New Year to all of you and also congratulate to you, Jai Hind. <laughs> if there is a written speech, uh, one may commit mistakes. Uh, I'll start with this gentleman here. Mantriji. I would like to ask you, Honorable Minister, that the common person who don't have computers, who cannot reserve his ticket in advance, uh, then uh, how can you improve his situation? Because he doesn't have a computer and he cannot get his tickets in advance. For uh, the common people, keeping in view the common man, I have made arrangements, and you have a beautiful question, because the common man does not have uh, information about uh, the reservation status. So uh, uh, they come to the station much, much in advance. Uh, the uh, people who are educated, uh, they uh, do their bookings in advance, and they see their watch, and they uh, last minute they come to the station. But the common man uh, comes uh, quite ahead of uh, time. And uh, when they purchase tickets, uh, they are uh, being uh, exploited uh, by the touts. Uh, so in order to uh, help these people, the the porters uh, are our assets. So, uh, in every post office, uh, we have made provision of a reservation of railway uh, tickets, and we uh, and tickets have been introduced. Uh, and they can uh, take it from there. And we have also assimilated the banks uh, in this uh, work. Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, this is a question at a very regional level, and the small lines that we have 
uh, why is it taking so long to convert that into the broad gauge um, from ISOL? And uh, for past 10 years, I have been seeing that it will be done next year or this year, but nothing has really happened on that. See, as far as broad gauge is concerned, uh, uh, we don't even have one inch of smaller uh, uh, meter gauge or narrow gauge. It will not be left like that. All the gauges will be converted into broad gauge in our country. And before I assume charge, uh, on a very large scale, uh, all these schemes which were there, the projects which were there, uh, their, uh, their uh, management was not being done properly and therefore there was a huge delay on the conversion of these narrow or meter gauge into broad gauge and now it will not be left now. Otherwise that area would lag behind in development and we are taking care of all that and money is no problem now with us. In Indian Railways we have, we are flush with funds and therefore the parliamentarians of our country who are the members of Indian Parliament, I, I keep calling members of parliament from each section or division and that you give your suggestions and I also call the general managers of the divisions and also discuss things with them. In the coming next five years all the uh, tracks would be converted into broad gauge in the Indian Railways. Mr. Minister, this question uh, it relates to you, Mr. Lalu, the person, because you uh, you are not new to the Indian politics and have been a leader for quite long and the situation that prevails in Indian politics now and their attitude attitude towards the public sector that is there, you are well aware with that, but this experience that has been there and it has infused a new direction or a new um, commitment in that and what impact did it have on Mr. Lalu Yadav, the leader, and uh, because you have, you have also been a part of that same politics and what new do you find now and what changes have been there in your own thinking, my thinking that was there earlier and the thinking is by birth. It, 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 you know, it comes to you when you are born and these samskaras, you know, these, the, the ideology which is there and I do not remain much reserved and my mind always remains very open and my style of communicating always remains unique and many people do not understand that and therefore they see me in a different way way and make a cartoon, cartoon out of me, but but those who have heard uh, about the Taj Mahal uh, and not seen with eyes, then what he has heard and if he were to write letters to his friends would not be able to write in that details if he has only heard about it. But if he has seen it actually with his eyes, then he would be able to uh, describe it in a better way and therefore I am discussing this with you um, and that my thinking and my knowledge as I said in the very beginning itself that I do not hail from a a very well of family and I am a self-made person and I have risen from the grassroots and from a very backward society and that I am a student leader and uh, was uh, a part of the uh, JP movement in the early 70s and I became a member of parliament for the first time in the year 1977 and, and this, the fragrance which is there in the Indian uh, in the earth of the country India, I always keep that on the top of my mind and my suggestion is that you do your work with honesty and commitment and uh, fulfill your responsibilities, then the, uh, the crisis that you face or the difficulties that you face might be resolved. I'll, I'll cite an example for your information. Uh, without mentioning anyone's name, I would like to say, because I do not deem that appropriate to name anyone, but all these facilities uh, were already there in the Indian Railways uh, all these years. All these uh, infrastructural facilities were there, but these were not handled properly. These were not put to appropriate use properly earlier. Namaskar, Mr. Minister. I am Amir Zumabhai, and when you had come to Singapore earlier, when you were uh, um, uh, when you were the Chief Minister of Bihar and your delegation had come, at that time uh, I was a host uh, uh, then and I would like to refresh your memory and uh, I greet you uh, for uh, this uh, stupendous job that you have uh, done by bringing about this turnaround in Indian Railways. And one question that I would like to put to you is that the ports that are there in India, 
are uh, insufficient in number and the connectivity of Indian Railways to these ports for, uh, for ferrying goods in import and export really deserves to be improved and what is your opinion on that? Thank you very much. All these seaports that we have uh, are being connected with Indian Railways. We are improving upon the connectivity on a, on a major scale and uh, even the new ports are being given uh, railway connectivity tracks. I met the chairman of uh, Suzuki Industries and he talked about uh, a plant and many uh, facilities are being given to them for loading their products on the trains and taking these to the ship uh, at the port and all these facilities are being given, be it the Rani port and we also have the containers services if you know and this uh, is, uh, we are going to benefit a lot uh, by providing this and this is also going to ensure timely disposal of uh, goods and uh, we export machineries or fertilizers or, or, or vehicles and there would be no hindrance in this and uh, we are going to provide railway connectivity facilities to all ports. It is important and necessary for us as well. Mr. Laluji, uh, you have brought about uh, uh, an immense turnaround in railways, but there is also a great need for a turnaround in Bihar as well. And do you think, therefore, that in Bihar such a turnaround can take place? And whether you would bring about such a turnaround in Bihar? Yes, see, I was uh, the CM of Bihar, and my wife were also the CM of Bihar. We were there for 15 years, and even now there is a government. But uh, but the comparison uh, between Bihar and other states of India, which are the states that are developed, when you when we compare Bihar with that, then we find that after independence, the planning that was done at the central level, probably uh, due justice was not given to Eastern UP or Bihar or Odisha. And when we compare these parts with other uh, states, I think there has the investment has been lowest in Bihar and mines that we have in Bihar. There is this Chota Nagpur region in Bihar and the, the uh, virtual owners of these mines in India are the central government and the income that comes, you would have heard that there is this area which is under the impact of Kosi River which flows in from, this, uh, from the neighboring country Nepal and the density of population is also quite uh, thick there and each year our people suffer from the onslaught of floods in uh, uh, in that region and I would like to thank the Prime Minister of India a lot that for the first time he accepted this that Ganga Ganges uh, as it is known is a national river and the, de the extensive damage that it's uh, overflow causes on both sides also deserves to be looked into and uh, the revenue that was being earned uh, because of the natural resources in Bihar were all going to the central government and uh, Bihar only had agriculture to uh, to fend with and to uh, floods to suffer with and uh, there were no infrastructure and I, as I told you that after 60 years for the first time the railways network were taken to Bihar and 65,000 crores worth railway projects are being taken to Bihar if you would have been in Bihar, you would have realized that at a place called Madhepura, we are setting up a local factory there, and at Chapra also we are setting up another factory, and at Son Dalmia, we are setting up a Kaplas Bogi factory there, and we are also constructing highways there. When we became a part of the government, we talked about backbone development of these states, and Bihar is being meted out a special treatment along with the state of Jammu and Kashmir and Odisha. We are doing special there funding, no so airport. therefore uh, there is no airport and lychee, you know, such a sweet uh, fruit, uh, you know, our Bihar produces uh, such uh, uh, delicious lychees and it is known for that and especially uh, in the area which is on the banks of river Gandak, but then it is produced on such a large scale, but there is no infrastructure and no planes or no cargoes to export it. We have vegetables, we produce uh, fishes and also so many other agro-produces which 
which are there. All these uh, are uh, are not reaching out because of the lack of inf infrastructure. And therefore, this is all there in my mind. And another point that I forgot to mention was that as long as you don't empower the farmers and do not uh, really uh, 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 allow them to earn enough money, the country will not really flourish. And there are 12,000 railway stations in the country. And uh, the produce, uh, the agricultural produce of the of the farmers, they are not getting uh, due uh, rates for their for uh, poultry products like milk, butter, fish, or uh, or onion or other agricultural produces. So these 12,000 railway stations which are there, uh, next to def we are the second largest landlord uh, in the country after the Ministry of Defence, and we have huge surplus of land available with us, and on these land. It is also there in our mind that uh, at these 12,000 railway stations, there should be agricultural outlets in joint venture, and then uh, we, we would also provide training for packaging. The farmers would bring their produce there. We are going to provide them with the market as well. And after it is packaged, it would be it would be defrozen. Uh, it would be frozen and then taken into containers to other places like we have at Japan. I kept looking for. I kept looking for a good, the uh, vegetable called pumpkin. And my daughter and my son-in-law are here, and I asked them for a pumpkin. They said we can get it from Mustafa. Uh, Mall. I said it has come from. Mus they said it has come from Kolkata, uh, city in India. We you have a good market uh, at Mustafa here, and I didn't get mustard anywhere. And they said you uh, you eat olive oil. We don't eat olive oil. We we relish uh, food being cooked in mustard oil. So since yesterday at my daughter's place, uh, all these lentils like uh, arhar, moong, and so and, and, and uh, so many other uh, things you know which are cooked in Indian kitchen. Uh, uh, were uh, savored, and I did not feel as if I am in Singapore. So at these 12,000 Indian railway stations, we are going to provide all these facilities and like shoes. You understand shoes? So which is worn on the feet? Where, where is it being sold? It is being sold in air-conditioned shops. And the grains uh, or, uh, or rice or vegetables or muttons or eggs, which gives you energy, is being sold on footpaths in India. Footpath for Vikra. It is uh, the uh, shoe that is worn on the feet. It is being uh, sold in AC shops uh, and cranes on footpaths. So that is the irony. So what we are going to do, we are going to open agricultural out, uh, uh, outlets. If you understand what is cereal, cereal is God. So it, 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 its place is not in the um, footpath. So we should give with due respect to our grains, uh, we are going to soon export uh, Gulf uh, countries. Uh, we don't get uh, onions, we don't get good potatoes, uh, organic potatoes. Where are they available? So we want to improve the, our economy. In the IT sector, we may be leading. But what about drinking water, water for irrigation? There, there will be a battle soon for uh, water because there's water scarcity in the country. Women face a lot of problems. They go to long distances to get water. Uh, uh, we should link uh, our uh, rivers. Garland scheme uh, should be formulated. Then comes pollution, the next problem. Then there are so many uh, in, in, in NGOs like Medha Parkar, Sundar Lal Bahuguna, who raise a lot of hue and cry about pollution. If uh, you, if the rivers uh, flow in the wrong direction, what will happen? The dams will uh, collapse. So I said, oh, forget it. We have the mantra. We we know the solution, the key solution. 64,000 uh, kilometers is a railway network. If you uh, see 
to, towards left or right, you can see surplus uh, land. Uh, you can see the pillars that earmarks our land. If uh, we can give it to our uh, employees, if we give it to them, I think uh, they can use it for irrigation uh, purposes. Uh, we are going to construct siphon, whether uh, rivers uh, of uh, south, north, or Ganga uh, river. We will give home pipe from Mumbai to Pune. You, you have, must have seen the home pipes. And there is no land problem. There is no conflict. So in the water sector also, we are going to have a monopoly very soon. There will be no quarrels uh, for uh, land. Like in Calcutta, they uh, take, uh, uh, they come out on the roads with uh, weapons. Uh, the mind, mind should apply, the, the reflexes should work. Uh, we just... Uh, wage of futile wars, uh, futile uh, conflicts with each other. This is wrong. Uh, see, if you apply your mind, what happens uh, is uh, the minimum needs are fulfilled by nature. But if you are greedy, nature is going to turn against you. The family from which I belong, or the poor people, they don't uh, have coats, they don't have adequate uh, uh, clothing. But um, you must have seen, seen Gandhiji. He used to wear scarce clothes and uh, still used to manage. But now we want air-conditioned rooms, air-conditioned offices, houses. But uh, earlier people used to live in mud houses, but still they were so happy. And uh, if uh, the cloth, uh, the loin cloth, it uh, it used to tear the the mother of the house used to uh, cut that portion and stitch it. And again, if it uh, gave way or tore, and now it could not be managed further, then what she used to do, do is she used to make a blanket uh, out of it and. Uh, she used to cover her children with it, and then it used to be used as bedding, and then uh, the, and after that also, when it did not uh, have capacity to do anything, then it was torn in small um, pieces, and it, it used to mop the house. Or, uh, Earlier, what oh, used so to happen is nobody had uh, gas, uh, but uh, they they <laughs> used to uh, with that <laughs> earthen uh, with the earth with soil they used to make fireplace. So all these things were used, uh, but now we have a luxurious life. Uh, you go to the uh, markets. Uh, you will find yen, dollars. You see so many electronic media, publicity, advertisements, uh, and everybody is uh, keen to see the advertisements of ornaments, jewelry. This, uh, so many, uh, there are many problems on account of this. So the uh, minimum needs uh, need to be fulfilled. So I invite uh, all of you to India that please invest in Indian railways, the people who have the capacity to invest, uh, and please participate in the joint venture. Freight corridors uh, project uh, is their world-class uh, railways are being uh, brought up there. Namaskar, Laluji. My greetings to you, Laluji. I would like to congratulate you that you have brought spectacular changes in Indian railways. A hard question for you, as I'm a journalist. It's a soft question. It is not a soft question. 64,000 square miles is the Indian Railway Network. But I can observe that you have not touched North East at all because I hail from North East. Isn't the Indian Railways the lifeline of India? 
to, to extrapolate, isn't it also a security, isn't a key it security lifeline a key of India? Security, uh, lifeline so of of India. So if you're going to ignore the Northeast, uh, how do you expect, how do you expect uh, uh, the uh, uh, railways to progress right like the China the has uh, done? And the entire Northeast, and the entire north, uh, uh, northeast uh, is linked to the rest of India, is left, of India, is left abs absolutely untouched, unconnected to the rest of India. India, and that's why it's in such a bad position. Okay. Uh, Madam, Madam. Uh, it, uh, in our government, that area is on top priority. Uh, in we our government, the, that uh, area is uh, on top priority. We know the importance of the northeast. Uh, this year, Kona, I'm going to connect Tripura, and, uh, Kohima, Arunachal and Arunachal Pradesh. Pradesh. National project. Uh, in the and national Bogie project Bill and also. Bogie Bill oh, Bridge uh, will are, soon we come up. We have already like sanctioned the money for this uh, project. Uh, like just like JNK, we know North that Northeast is very important, uh, is uh, the, and Northeast uh, fund uh, is being pro uh, provided by, by the. Uh, Government, within not by the Indian rails, uh, Railways. Uh, the within uh, five years, we are going to connect it. There is certain see. hurdles because uh, uh, mountain, making mountain, projects mountain, in their mountain. area is very so uh, just um, costly. Mountain, just because yeah, of the hilly terrain of uh, that uh, area, uh, it becomes uh, costly. Yeah, That's but we are already uh, at work, uh, we ha and we uh, we, we are not uh, at all ignoring uh, the northeast. And I'm a great supporter of northeast. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Minister, sir. I am from Bihar. I am a student in this university. And we are very proud that the first university was in Bihar. But the illiteracy rate of Bihar is the highest, even higher than African regions. When you walk into the next elections and you become the prime minister of the India, then what are you going to do in the education sector? No, because I am speaking with a whole lot of conviction on uh, I'm, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, you are running a very prof profitable department so you have all the qualification of becoming the Prime Minister of India that is very uh, right you have said a very positive uh, thing um, and you have made me the Prime Minister of India I'm thankful for to you uh, Education is really compulsory. It is a must because without education, no development, no progress can take place. And in Bihar, I know the Nalanda University, the biggest university in the world, was established in Bihar. And uh, democracy during Lichavi dynasty, uh, at that time, Bihar made the country proud. Uh, so uh, Sarva Siksha Abhyan is a uh, vital program of uh, our government. Uh, we want everybody to be educated in the country, so it is a thrust area, especially uh, in the field of minority education. Kasturba University, Navodya uh, School, Central schools. Uh, of the, um, male, female education is we are giving more importance to female education compared to male education, particularly for the minority community. That's a must. Uh, we know that. Uh, when I was the chief minister of Bihar, uh, at that time, I drew, drew the attention of uh, the uh, those uh, families uh, whose children were grazing cows and buffaloes, uh, and uh, they lived uh, in the rural area. So I drew their attention of those uh, families towards education. That uh, grazing uh, family, uh, grazing uh, the cows and buffaloes is their need. But have you heard about Charvaha Vidyale? School for the it is uh, it means school for the shepherd. That that you get educated in these schools, but at the same time you can go for grazing your cows and buffaloes also. And I was the butt of uh, uh, criticism. People said uh, that uh, uh, my children were going in any school, whereas uh, these um, uh, children of uh, the um, um, Poor families were going to this shepherd um, schools. So our uh, thrust area is education, is health. Uh, 
Aligarh campus is uh, being set up uh, in Katihar University. We are paying attention to the education of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes. We are giving them free uh, meals. And we are we are giving uh, we are imparting uh, computer education uh, to them, and uh, we are investing a huge amount of uh, money in the 11th five-year plan uh, for education. So, in the field of education, uh, we uh, Kerala, as you know, uh, their people are hundred percent literate. Goa too, people are very educated. Not only Bihar, Eastern, UP, UP, Urissa, Bihar, their people yes, are less yes, educated. Yes. Uh, they do not uh, have yes. access to education. Thank I you, agree. Laluji. I'm sorry Thank we'll you, have Laluji. to stop here, ladies and gentlemen. I know there are lots of questions all of you have, uh, but it's getting past one one fifteen now. Sir, I would like to thank you once again okay. on behalf of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Sure. We are ever so grateful to you for the time you have spent um, with us here and for the very elaborate um, presentation that was given on the Indian Railways and your own thoughts not just on the railways but on issues of governance uh, and issues of contemporary Indian politics. So we are extremely grateful to you for your time uh, and for uh, being with us and sharing your thoughts. We hope this will not be your last visit to uh, the Lee Kuan Yew School that you will come back here probably as the Prime Minister of India, and we will invite you. Uh, if I think I told you what Mush President Musharraf said, that he would not dare to contest against Laluji, even in Pakistan. If you take a vote in this room, I suppose you will sweep the polls. Thank That's you. the thank kind of reaction. I thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, just one request. Please be seated till Laluji leaves the room, and please hand over your, uh, the, the mics that you have for the uh, translation as you leave. There is some uh, uh, token of appreciation on behalf of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. We would like to present a bouquet to Laluji and to his senior colleagues. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my so, karta hun, ke announce uh, that uh, in uh, uh, INSEAD gives a uh, real uh, education training to our students. Uh, in this institution also, we are soon going to start the railway officers training.